what our body is capable of doing um, is so much more greater than what we believe is possible. What we believe is possible is purely put or programmed into us based on our life experiences, our parents, our education, our friends, our, you know, whatever has happened to you in life will create your worldview. But what your body can actually do surpasses the mind's limitations. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Our Core Things. Today, my guest is Keiko Takashi, um, a friend and uh, a fitness instructor that I met at a bar studio in Hong Kong. Keiko is also the founder of Breath of Life Ice Bath. She is a certified breathwork practitioner, a runner, and also a mother of three. So Keiko's ice bath journey began when she was stuck in Phuket during COVID and she really, really needed a way to relieve her stress and anxiety. She then devised um, Breath of Life Ice Bath because it really helped her relieve her anxiety and she now wants to share this with other people. Breath of Life Ice Bath is a transformational and empowering breathwork and cold meditation program, which helps you to release stored emotions, relieve stress, and also tap into your internal power source. Born and raised in Toronto, Keiko relocated to Hong Kong in 2003 uh, and now lives between Hong Kong and Phuket. I really, really enjoyed this episode and I hope that you will too. Hi Keiko, welcome to our Hi. So uh, let's talk through what Breath of Life actually is and the steps you go through during the process. And then we can talk about how it really helped you as well. Sure. Um, <clears throat> we start off with some movement and just kind of releasing tension throughout the body, um, moving into uh, very simple breathing techniques, but basically it's meditation. And um, I don't know if, if you know, but um, meditation, the act of meditation actually reduces the size of your amygdala. Your amygdala is the portion of your brain that um, is the fight or flight response. So in the actual act of meditation, and if you have a regular practice of meditation, the size of your amygdala can shrink, mm -hmm. which is a great thing because if you have anxiety, usually the size of your amygdala is, is bigger because you, you're, you've been um, trained to kind of, or your body has been in a state of fight or flight for a long time. Um, and so with this meditation and breath work, actually you can enter a state of um, very peaceful and calm, lowered heart rate. And it is when you're in this peaceful, calm, lowered heart rate state that you can actually conquer anything in life including a 1.5 degree ice bath. It's quite amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I, love <laughs> I love it too. So it's really just through breathing, through your breath um, controls your heart. So if you focus on the breath, you can actually yourself lower your heart rate. And then in that lowered heart rate state, you can enter an ice bath and feel completely at peace and calm. And so for me, there's many uh, different like physiological benefits of being in an ice bath. But for my program, I focus mainly on the mental and emotional well-being or journey. I look at ice bath as a catalyst to um, give you an opportunity to kind of break your day to day programming. So you're doing something that's difficult, challenging, not part of your normal routine. Um, and it and it's challenging to a point where you're not really able to focus on other things except for the present moment. And so it's this combination of breath work, meditation, being completely present um, and in this cold state that you can access some buried emotions, release stress. Um, and so I use it more like a catalyst for personal change and growth. I actually also experienced Breath of Life, I think it was last month, Yeah. Um, with Keiko on a Hong Kong rooftop. It was an amazing, amazing experience. It was my first ever experience um, trying 
to be in in an ice bath meditation and um I did last for around seven minutes I think um, yeah you're in there for a while and I did as as quite an anxious person myself I did feel a lot more calm and at ease I mean of of course during the immersion and also afterwards like the, for the next few days I think and I felt it felt really very um yeah just very centering and Keiko was an amazing guide I'm also really curious because you were a fitness instructor and also a runner but did those two things like not help you to get into your body and reduce the anxiety was was ice bath the most useful way um to be honest I think I started it because I was in a lot of pain I was going through a really challenging difficult time um and I had to make some life decisions to, I guess, manage um, the three kids in Thailand by myself. Um, and one of those decisions was cutting alcohol. And when I cut the alcohol, I realized that there were a lot of things that I hadn't been dealing with, just um, that was causing me a lot of stress, but I didn't put all of those things together. But in cutting the alcohol, I then realized, oh, there's quite a lot of stuff there that I haven't unpacked in my life, some experiences I've gone through. Um, and so it was kind of a journey of pain, I think. Um, and just being in so much um, anxiety and stress that I was desperately looking for a way to feel better. And so that started my journey of ice bath. When you were drinking at midnight, were your kids aware of that? Yeah, I was very open. I, I was always, I had always been a drinker. It was something that I was proud of. It was something that um, was actually such a huge part of my, I guess, persona or personality and my lifestyle. So there wasn't, I wasn't hiding it. But I didn't, um, like I think in not drinking, I re it was just the ability to realize in those moments that when I wasn't drinking, I then had all of these anxious feelings that I didn't necessarily know that I was drinking them away, but I was drinking them away. Like I wasn't consciously like, oh, I need to, you know, drink this bottle so I feel better. It would be more of a oh, the, today has been really stressful. I just really would like to have a drink. Mm. But that was my routine. And it's mm. only when you break your routine that you realize, okay, actually, this routine was covering up something that I wasn't aware of. Mm -hmm. mm. So, so realizing that you were using drinking to cover up your anxious feelings was the moment in yeah. which you decided that you need to, to change that programming and do something different. Yes, like I was more like desperate, like desperately seeking something that was healthy that was going to make me feel better. And why did you choose ice bath out of, I guess, in the many available coping mechanisms? Um, so I had tried other, other things. I had tried running and I uh, am a fitness instructor, so I did do a lot of workouts, yoga, um, but they would not bring the level of relief that I needed, I guess. Um, it's funny. I had, I have a friend named Pearl and she also lives in Thailand and she was ice bathing first. And I would see her on Instagram going into ice baths. And then I started researching what exactly are the benefits of this thing that she's doing. And I had reached out to her and said, hey, I really wanna try what you're doing, um, but I'm really scared to try it on my own. And so she was like, why don't you just come and do it with me? And so I think she made it accessible for me mm -hmm. and not scary, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know Pearl too, I love Pearl. Yeah, she's amazing. Hi, Pearl. 
Um, it, it's, it's amazing to have those people in your life who you can just reach out to and, and, and you know they'll support you on your journey no matter what. So yeah, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you found Ice Bath and, and it worked for you and it helped you change your programming. And then now you, you, you've decided to bring it to, to us, like to the rest of the world. Um, that's, that's amazing. So thank you so much for sharing the story of how you got into, into Breath of Life. I think one of the worst things we all do is pretend that we're okay when we're not okay, because that is a separation of self. And in that separation, we, we use quite a lot of energy um, in suppressing those feelings. But we're not our emotions. And I think that's one thing that I learned during this journey is we can have feelings of anger, feelings of um, sadness, loneliness, um, but it's not you. They're just emotions. And given an opportunity to release them in a healthy way, you don't need to use energy to hold it within you anymore. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's it's so often easy to associate yourself with your emotions. Like even mm -hmm. the way we we talk about it, like I am anxious or I am sad. Like you are this yeah. but you're not. It's just you're not. It's just you are feeling this but you're not that. Yeah, so I think like with the ice bath it's a form of like exposure therapy. Um it's this process called hormesis. So if you if you expose your body to healthy um, avenues of stress, you can actually retrain your system to be able to tolerate varying levels of stress. Mm. And so you actually become stronger in experiencing things that are healthy and challenging. Right. A lot of stress is unhealthy. It's challenging and it's unhealthy only in that we don't digest the, the stress hormones. So it's like when you get that panic attack of like, oh, I have this deadline or I'm late or, you know, all of these things are not working out and, you know, I'm screwed. Those feelings. So that puts you into like a panic fight or flight mode. Now, what do we do with those hormones? Those hormones are actually good for us. They make us faster. They make us smarter. They make us energized and more awake. But when once you've used those benefits, the stress hormones need to leave your body. Mm. And meditation, breath work, um, and cold therapy are excellent ways to digest some of those stress hormones. Yes, yes. I think... I was just watching this TED talk the other day about how stress can be really, really good for you. It's quite a famous TED talk by this lady called Kelly McGonigal, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and she's just saying everybody needs to to live with a certain level of stress. And it's also important to differentiate the stress that is you living day to day versus the stress that is actually life threatening. Yes. Yeah. Said. Um, just digesting stress is really important. Mm -hmm. um, but I actually wanted to circle back to what you were talking about a little, a few minutes ago, which was how you, you access your emotions of some of those feelings of uh, anxiety from your childhood mm -hmm. and, and like the stress from having to single parent kids in Phuket by yourself. So then, I mean, even though you've been able to digest some of that during the breath work, how how can people after the session after the breath breath of life session continue to to access this feeling again and and uh, digest their feelings of stress? Um, so I think there are many ways. I think once you have an introduction to cold therapy, and if you find that it works for you, there are many ways to continue that either at home. Or, for example, going into cryo chamber, cold showers. Um, I think that once you open the door and you learn how to do it, um, it's no longer there is no longer a barrier to accessing this kind of therapy. Mm. And what about for you? Like after 
uncovering those emotions. Yeah. I, like, how else did you process it? Did you deal with it? Um, and yeah, is it is it still something that that you face every single time you do a, an immersion? Um, it's really different for me now. So if we go back and talk about exposure therapy or the, the concept of hormesis, which is um, regular exposure to good kinds of stress, your tolerance and your ability to handle stressful situations um, improves. Every single time you do something difficult, you get better and the possibilities in your mind of what you are actually capable of doing increase. And so now when I go into an ice bath, it is not this um, kind of bubbling of feelings coming up to the surface because I think on this journey that I've been on, I got a lot better at just sitting with my feelings and really understanding that they're just feelings. And if I honor them and if I witness them, I don't need to hold on to them. Mm. yeah and so it, yeah. it, it I mean I think like this it's a journey right it's a wellness journey and depending on where you are in your life and what you're going through um, it'll be a slightly different version of a journey so when I first started and I was in this kind of very challenging situation that I didn't have um, you know any knowledge or access to how to help myself feel better, that it put me on this path to find and search things that would help me feel better. Um, so the ice bath was a completely different experience for me back then. Um, and in figuring out what worked for me, all I wanted to do was share that with people. I just wanted to be like, hey, so I went through this really hard time and this is what worked for me. And so I just present it and let you try and see if it works for you. Because if, if it even helps one person, then it was kind of worth it. All of it. I love that. I love yeah. that. And I can see you really let up when, when you're talking about it. And I know that, and I've seen you do it. Like you are, you're so good. You're so passionate. You're so in the moment when you're doing it. Um, and I'm so excited for you to continue this program. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so, so you said this really helped you um, also deal with your alcohol consumption. Um, and I'm just curious. So, are you are you sober right now, or do you still do you still drink every so often? Um, so, I don't think that the ice bath help helps me or helped me with not drinking. I think I had made a conscious conscious decision to not drink because it wasn't a sustainable way to live, you know, single parenting, three kids. Um, and I was using the alcohol in a way to manage the stress that I was under. Um, I think what I realized in doing the ice bath is that I was then able to access a part of me that didn't require the alcohol anymore. Mm -hmm. it, it completely changed my perspective on um, how I was approaching my life. And so I used to, you know, have a really tough day or busy day and like look forward to that drink, right? Like, oh, I really need to have that drink. And um, for me personally, so everybody's alcohol journey would be different. But for me personally, that one drink would never be one drink. It would be two drinks, three drinks, four drinks, 12 drinks. It would be a lot of drinks. Um, and I would, you know, have a good time and I would feel great. Um, and I was still able to function in my life. But what I wasn't doing was then dealing with why I was actually feeling the way that I was feeling. Mm -hmm. And so when I started the ice bath journey, I realized that okay so first of all um, alcohol is a depressant and ice bath is a dopamine hit it's a huge dopamine hit 250 time dopamine hit that lasts pretty much um, the whole day so mm -hmm. in doing the ice bath and relieving the anxiety feelings 
I then didn't have the need to look forward to having a drink at the end of the day. And of course, this was like a gradual process. Like, I feel like, um, obviously looking back on it, I can express it differently. But when I was in it, it wasn't something that I was really thinking about or consciously making decisions. You know, it just started off as a, hey, so I'm not drinking. I'm not going to drink because my life is really difficult. Like it doesn't match with my life schedule right now. Um, and I don't feel that I'm drinking in healthy ways. That's how it started, right? And then in the then it was a realization of like, oh, okay, so now that I'm not drinking, I have all these feelings that I can't drink away. And so in sitting there with the feelings and crying and like going back and digesting what's going on, what what has been going on in my life, um, then I I went into I start to look for other ways to feel better. So I found the ice bath. In doing the ice bath, I realized that I could actually live a completely different life. So like the pattern or the programming that I was living before, that 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 was an old me. And in my new realization or, or new learning um, was that there is another way to deal with stress and anxiety. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then so from there, then it turned into, okay, so how do I kind of extend or change this ice bath experience? And is it possible for it to be Zen like and not painful and like sheer willpower? And so it it was just um, kind of a slow development. I got certified in breath work and then tried different breathing methods in the ice bath. Um, and really found that it's not complicated. In order to calm your nervous system down, all you really need to do is exhale. With an extended exhale, then your following breath is a full intentional breath. That full intentional breath teaches or signals your body that you're actually safe. Mm. So when you're doing this breath pattern, inside an ice bath, you can actually have feelings of safety. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's um, not an elevated heart rate or stressful experience. Yes, I remember the first moment going into the ice bath and you just telling me to, to breathe because my obviously my, my brain was like, it is, it's cold, get out. But then you're. But then when you breathe and get into your body and remind that it's that it is safe, then then you just sort of sort of get into that feeling and get centered. Yeah, for sure. There's a lot of people that have to be like, "Hey, it's time to come out now," <laughs> and they're like, "No, can I have a few more minutes?" Which I think is completely empowering. You know, like I think we forget that we are not our brains. We are whole entities, human spirits, body, mind, and what our body is capable of doing um, is so much more greater than what we believe is possible. What we believe is possible is purely put or programmed into us based on our life experiences, our parents, our education, our friends, our you know, whatever has happened to you in life will create your worldview. But what your body can actually do surpasses the mind's limitations. Mm-hmm. And when we're able to, so your, your brain sets off alarms because that's its job. Your brain is there to help keep you safe. The problem with that is that if your brain is constantly telling you that you're in danger, you're going to be late. This is not done. I have to get there. You know, like all of these things, you know, it's not enough money or how am I going to pay my bills or what, how are the kids going to grow up? Like all of these fears are in your head, but it's not your body. And when we can settle the mind or allow the thoughts in the mind to pass because we're not our feelings, right? And we can drop into the body 
we can actually tap into this inner power source. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and in tapping into this inner power source, you actually realize how infinitely powerful you are. And every single person has it. It's not special to me. It's not special to you. It's not special. It's accessible by every single person. They just haven't been shown how to do it. I agree. Um, yesterday when we were um, calling to prepare for the podcast, I remember you told me to just maybe even meditate before it because you know that I'm a person who's also quite often in my head. Yeah. Um, and I can formulate, you know, lots of questions. But the the questions that are most likely to to touch people and come from my heart. And so I think that, you know, this is always a good reminder to always also drop back into your inner power, which is where and, and be more heart centered. There's research out now that the electromagnetic waves coming out from your heart are 4,000 times greater than the energy that's coming through your brain waves. Um, and I think this is really powerful information to kind of bring back that we are whole humans. I think there's a lot of separation between, um, you know, who we think we are and who we actually are on the inside. And, mm -hmm. and I think in bringing the two together, you become a much more powerful energy source. Whereas yes. when, when there is separation, so it's like, I feel bad, but I'm just going to put the feelings to the side, right? Because that's the most logical thing to do. I'm just going to focus on what I'm doing right now. What happens is those feelings without given space to be witnessed or felt become separated from you. And when we are separated, we can't be whole humans. So it's only in bringing that, those portions of you back, that vulnerability, that, you know, feeling, your feelings, you, you bring it back together. You can then harness this internal heart space that you have. Mm, yeah. Yes, that is so and function from here. Yeah, I, I love what you just said about how if we separate those two things, we can't be like authentic whole humans. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm just wondering after practicing this yourself, um, is there anything you've noticed that's different about your approach to life, about your approach to your kids as a mother? Have you changed any of that because you became more heart centered and more aware of your own emotions? I, um, I've definitely changed as a person. I think a lot of my anxiety, fears, um, and stress came from a place of fear, worried that things were not going to work out, um, being afraid of what might happen or what might not happen. And I think inadvertently, as parents, you transfer these thoughts and fears to your kids. Um, and in kind of harnessing and tapping into my internal power source, dropping into my heart. Because actually, the most beautiful parts of us are centered in the heart, in our vulnerability, in our raw emotions, on how we react to whatever is going on. Um, and in dropping into that space, I was then able to show my kids and teach my kids to trust their heart. So it doesn't matter what you think is the right thing to do. It's more like, how does that feel for you? Mm -hmm. And honoring your heart first. Mm -hmm. Because I, I truly believe that if you follow your heart, you will never end up in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. So this is the messaging that I switched for my kids. And, and I don't think that I was, I, I wasn't negative or um, pressuring to my kids before, but I just think the messaging wasn't clear. Like, you know, I would just always say like, be yourself and, um, you know, try your best. I mean, all the regular parenting things that you would say, but now I really just understand. It doesn't matter what anyone thinks. How does that feel for you? and honor that. 
And in honoring that, all the answers to your life will come. Mm. So it's not about what somebody else says or what somebody else did um, or what you think you should do or what you think you shouldn't do. It's really dropping into your body and trusting Mm -hmm. yourself. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I agree with you. I mean, it's not always the easiest thing to do. No, it's not. Especially in in societies like Hong Kong or or London, where there are everybody's just constantly telling you what to do, or or there's so many types of social messaging that's like what you should be doing. Yeah. Um, but sometimes you just need to walk all of those things out and focus on that feeling. Yeah. In your own gut of of what is right. Right. And what is the right next thing to do. And I think like we just. And, and I think everyone is like this, um, is that we function from a space of fear. And if you were to eliminate your fear or whatever limitations are in your mind, what you believe isn't possible, um, if you eliminate those things and just had safety, how would you approach your life? And I think that if you can eliminate the fear, you then eliminate the anxiety. Then when you eliminate the fear and anxiety, you have kind of like this solid trust that things are going to work out for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then I guess my next question is, um, there are certain fears that, I mean, maybe hypothetically it is you can eliminate like the fear of maybe not making enough money but the fear is actually that that is an actual problem that a lot of people have to deal with so so if you were just talking to a person who has like a regular full-time job but wants to eliminate that sense of fear I guess what would you say to them like where could they start um I think that I mean obviously I don't have answers for everybody else's life I only have answers that worked for me personally um, and we as a family have been facing quite um, long periods of unemployment during COVID and with three kids the expenses are a lot and sort of you know um, trying to d- deal with and, and work through life's challenges we've, we've had our share of life's challenges too um, But I think it's that the fear keeps you trapped. And so energetically, you are in a space of lack or worried, like energetically stuck. And if you can find ways to digest your anxieties, those fears and release those emotions, then you can access a different portion of you energetically and that trust will allow you to be brave and courageous to try and approach life in a completely different way. Mm. I really believe the universe works for us. I, I feel like if you ask the universe for answers, they will appear. And if you trust that even if you can't see how you're going to achieve something or do something, that it's going to happen for you. Um, Talking about your trust in the universe, I'm just curious also whether you ever saw yourself as a like ice bath and breathwork instructor, uh, or or is this something that you just followed your heart and then this, this is what led you there? So I didn't start this journey aiming to be anything. I really just was desperate to find ways of feeling better um, that was not unhealthy. So healthy ways of feeling better. And then once I figured out what worked for me, I just wanted to share that with other people um, and see if it would be helpful to them because I know that for me personally I really suffered and it was very painful and challenging to go through all of that and if it was helpful to somebody um, that I wanted to be able to share that 
then once I started doing that, um, I kind of thought, how can I improve it to share it to a greater number of people? Um, but no, it's not something that I planned, but I have to say, like, um, on this journey, I, the doors have opened for me. Um, people have come to support me. Um, there are, there have been a lot of signs for me personally that what I'm doing is something that is very helpful to people. And so I'm just following that. So I don't know how long I'm doing it for. I don't know if I'll be doing this forever, but I know that in this moment, it feels really good and it feels really right. And the feedback um, of, I think, almost 300 people now has been really positive. So I'm really grateful and I just want to, um, I just want to do something good. Mm. Well, I definitely see your passion and your light like, and, and just your, your desire to bring what added value to your life to other people. So thank you so much for, for sharing that and like developing that program. I think already, I'm sure the 300 people that experienced uh, Breath of Life, like already know, like know the experience and it has helped them, including myself. Um, so you. please do keep doing it. <laughs> As you know, I also am a huge advocate for sustainability. I write a lot about it in my work. And I just want to ask you, what does sustainability mean to you on a personal level, on a personal and environmental level? Um, so to answer that question, I just want to explain first. That I think that I spent many years of my life over-functioning, hmm. making sure I had everything done, making sure that everything was done right. Um, you know, if I wanted it to get done properly, I would just do it myself. And I wasn't good at asking for help, and I wasn't good at delegating or sharing the load, whether that was the parenting load or workload when I when I used to work um, in an office, just in life in general, I was over-functioning. And it wasn't until I had a breakdown that I realized that it is not sustainable to live life like that. And I think that it may seem sustainable in your youth because you have a lot more energy, um, but at a certain age, you realize that you, you're paying for it in ways that are not apparent to you in the moment. And so sustainability for me means living my life um, and facing whatever is going on, challenges in my life in a way that I can keep going, like where it's not a tax on myself, on my health, my emotional well-being, my mental well-being, that it is a sustainable way to live. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. It is. I mean, whether this applies to, to ourselves or or what we're doing to the planet, that's exactly my answer for it as well. Like it's, we need to do things in a way that is not, I mean, maybe taxing a little bit, but not in a way that is, cannot last in the long term. Yeah. Um, and that's what I learned about myself as well because I was also over functioning a lot and I just found it really ironic that I'm talking about all these things about sustainability and I wasn't even doing it for myself that's why I, I incorporated I incorporated this question also because I think it's important it's an important reminder that sustainability really does start with yourself it really does and my second question is what gives you peace like, what are the moments or the places or the things you do that give you the most peace? So I think the one thing, the main thing that um, gives me peace now is that I'm not afraid of, like, anything. It's okay. I, I trust that I have the tools to handle whatever comes. Um, obviously, like... I don't want lots of terrible stuff to come and happen, but 
whatever it is in life, I, I'm not afraid of it anymore. Um, and I think that has been really peaceful for me. It's given me a lot of peace that I, I trust myself. I trust that I'm living a heart led life. And, um, I don't believe that if you trust your heart, you will ever end up in the wrong place. I mean, that is not a, a place that, I don't know, that is easy to reach and that's beautiful. Yeah, wow. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I had like the most amazing conversation with you. So thank you so much for being so present. Thank you for speaking from your heart and sharing your story. Um, I, yeah, I mean, anybody who's in Hong Kong, I would definitely recommend you to try uh, Breath of Life because it's such, it's just such a beautiful transformational experience and I can't wait to see where you take it. Yeah, thank you for sharing your light with me today. Oh, thanks so much for having me. I really enjoyed talking to you and um, I think it's empowering. The whole journey is 